Hey there, everyone. Professor Zeeb here, and welcome into another video segment uh, as we progress through the class here. Uh, what we're going to talk about this time is a really hot topic in the class, uh, something that we can all kind of relate to with the advent of technology and smartphones and all that stuff. And we're going to talk about screen time. We're going to look at what the research actually says about TV and exposure to screen time and how it affects our developmental course. So let's get right to it here. All right, so median screen time. We're gonna look at some research uh, that shows the effects of this. <clears throat> okay, and so here we go. We're gonna start off with TV. Look at some different TV facts, okay? According to research, children ages two to four watch on average two to four hours of TV per day. Okay, so once again, that, that's a lot of TV if you kind of think about that. that. That's almost as much time as kids spend in the classroom, by the way. So we know that kids are exposed to TV a lot and certainly screen time in many different um, sort of avenues or varieties, you know, with, sm with smartphones and computers and, uh, and so on, tablets and things like that. Okay, so we know that kids are watching a lot of TV. We know that TV is one of the most inf influential types of media there is. Obviously, the internet is probably surpassed that, or if not very close to that. But certainly, screen time in general is very influential. Uh, because if you, if you think about it, kids are accessing this stuff through you know, computers, iPads, cell phones, and things like that. It's very easy to access this, and it's all over the place. What's kind of scary about this stuff or alarming, I should say, is that it's often unsupervised, okay? So looking at a study, this particular study found that half of children in the study, they're interviewed about their the rules about TV and screen time and so forth. They found that about half of the children in that study simply said there were no rules about watching TV in the house. In other words, they could watch whatever they wanted. There was no control or limitations over that. So guys, I want you to think about how much stuff is on TV, the violent stuff and all the appro adult appropriate uh, type material that kids have access to readily. Half of these kids in the study said there was no rules. So to me, as a psychologist, as a developmental uh, expert, that, that seems kind of alarming and that can trickle down to have some, some, some effects here. All right, let's look at how television and screen time affect cognitive development. We have a lot of evidence that children's cognitive structures can be altered by what they're viewing on the screen. Keep in mind, children remember what is being said in the program, even if they're not looking. So you get these parents that, you know, when something horrible comes on the screen, okay, cover your eyes, don't look. Remember, they may still be hearing what, what's going on uh, in the scene. You know, they're hearing, you know, whether it's aggressive, violent sounds, people in anguish, sexual sounds. Uh, they can still kind of put it together, what's happening, even if they're not looking. So make sure that if something inappropriate comes on the screen and your kids are in the room, make sure they go out. So even if they cover their eyes, they may still be absorbing that information. Studies have also found that on the positive side, that pro-social media is linked to pro-social behavior. So certainly negative stuff could translate into negative um, associated factors, but we're also finding that pro-social stuff can be linked to pro-social behavior in children. So that's encouraging. Either way you look at it, it shows that kids are being affected in one way or another, or at least being influenced by what they see on, see on screens. The amount of time looking at the screen is related to age and seems to be developmental in nature. So for example, we know that children will be looking at the screen more and more as they approach middle childhood, which then it becomes more steady, but then declines after age 12. So in terms of how they're glued to the set and what's happening, we find that it is to a certain extent linked to age. Let's repeat that. It increases up to middle childhood, remains steady, and then seems to decline after age 12. 
We've also found a connection between screen time and academic achievement, okay? What the studies are basically showing is that anything greater than 30 hours per week, if you think about it, that is a lot of TV and screen time, it seems to be uh, linked to interference with academic achievement. In other words, that, that kind of makes sense. If they're spending more time in front of a screen watching programs and things like that, rather than reading or doing their homework, we're going to see an effect on their grades. So guys, as parents, so important to limit screen time and make sure they're getting <clears throat> opportunities to read, to do math, to stimulate their mind in other ways, okay? So the way I kind of run it in my household is we have a limit on how much screen time they can actually have and they have to get their reading done before that. So to me, that, that's just a better way to approach that. Don't just let them have unlimited access and unlimited time because not only mentally does that affect them, but physically as we're gonna see down the road uh, with the lecture. So in this particular case, <clears throat> they found that anything over 30 hours per week, which is an enormous amount of screen time, seems to interfere with academic achievement, in other words, how they're doing in school. One of the reasons we're concerned about screen time is that TV and these internet programs seem to have a lot of violence. And so the question here is that, is television viewing related to being violent in real life? In other words, if kids are watching very violent programming or people are be getting hurt or killed or whatever it is, is that linked to them potentially becoming violent or is that associated with violent behavior? Well, I can tell you guys, uh, the research is really leaning in one direction. You ready for this? Over 3,500 studies have been conducted. And by the way, these days that number is higher. This is an older statistic. So 3,500 studies, in other words, a lot of research has been done on the connection between TV and violent behavior. They found that only 18 of those studies have not shown a positive correlation. Do you understand that? So remember, that number is bigger now. And so we're finding that overwhelmingly, the research is showing a connection between violence and TV, meaning violent programming. So you have to be careful with this, guys. This does not mean that watching violent TV makes you violent or causes you to be violent. Remember, this is correlational data. So either television is associated with becoming a violent person or violent people are drawn to violent programming, which you could also argue. Either way, we have found overwhelming evidence of an association, a positive association, meaning that they both increase together in many, many different studies. Remember, we've, we've made this point early on in the class that kids often learn through observation. So if they're observing violence on the screen, if they're observing main characters be violent to obtain a goal, they may understand that that is what I should be doing. That is the right thing to do, and that is completely acceptable. We don't want kids to have the message that violence is the answer, because obviously there are alternate solutions to almost everything. So you have to kind of think about that and make sure your kids understand that, that this is just a show, it's fantasy, it's not real, for example. So don't get wrapped into the reality of a TV show because it, it is uh, fiction in that sense. They've also found, according to the study done in 2015 by Coker and others, TV, video games, and music video violence is associated with violent aggression. So in other words, it's not just screen time with TV, you know, and things like Hulu and Netflix. It could be actually violent video games. I, I don't know if you guys are gamers, but the, the Video games today are so graphic and so real. Uh, you know, the graphics are absolutely amazing. I love that from a gamer perspective. But to a child's perspective, it seems very real, almost, you know, like lifelike in that sense. And therefore, a lot of studies are showing connections between violent video games, even, and violent behavior. Okay, so what are our concerns about screen time? Well, exposure to aggression and violence. Remember, a lot of these programs have a potential of harming others or being motivated, motivated to harm people in some way. 
there was a study that examined uh, these Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons that were famous, you know, on the weekend, kids get up early and they watch cartoons. You think cartoons would be kid friendly and safe, you know, they're cartoons, right? They have found that kid programming, especially these cartoons, are some of the most violent programming out there marketed to kids. And they contain about 25 violent acts per hour. I mean, that, that's just mind blowing to realize that programming targeted at children, 25 acts of violence on average. Obviously there's variation of that, but you understand what I mean. Keep in mind that aspects of psychological, physical, and sexual violence are easily obtainable to children throughout the world by simply turning on a device or a TV set. So due to our advancing technology, which is a great thing, you literally have access to that stuff within seconds, right? And not only that, you can carry it around with you wherever you go on your smartphone or on your tablet. So now we think that the access is just so easy for kids and people to sort of view violence and sexual uh, information in terms of, you know, on programming, things like that, that kids just have really easy time uh, getting access to those things. You have to keep in mind that the effects of watching violence on TV are more intense for children than adults. I mean, that probably goes without saying, but remember the problem here is that kids often think it's real, okay? So if you're one of those parents that lets your kids watch this stuff, you wanna make sure, which I don't agree with, but you wanna make sure you, you uh, tell them or explain to them that this is not real. This is not how the world works. This is entertainment. This is not a reality. You don't have to murder the bad guy to solve a problem. That makes the show interesting and that's why it's there. You know, obviously you're saying it at their level. Make sure you translate that message or communicate that message that this is not reality. Kids need to understand and the difference between, you know, entertainment and media with real life. Obviously uh, they need to do that. Also keep in mind that many psychologists believe kids understand the world very slowly and gradually as their cognitive skills to develop, develop, excuse me. So young children especially may not quite understand that this is fiction. So in that case, I mean, I would say have them avoid it altogether, but, but if you are letting them view that, you wanna make sure they understand that it's not real, okay? Some psychologists believe that by kids viewing this stuff and not understanding that, to a certain extent, they can lose their sense of reality and even fantasize about violence. So that's, to me, that's kind of a, you know, sort of a disturbing thing and uh, just very alarming. One of the major reasons we're concerned about exposure to TV violence is this whole concept of desensitization. We think that the, the amount of exposure kids are getting to violent programming these days is desensitizing them to the effects of violence. In other words, emotionally, they're becoming numb to it, almost like it's, it's not a big deal. So guys, I look back in my childhood, obviously there was violent programming that you could have access to, but it seems so tame to what it is today, especially like cable type shows and inter internet-based shows where they can get away with that. In other words, kids are exposed to violence at a way more intense level compared to 20 years ago or whatever it was. And so we think that all this exposure every day is causing them to become emotionally numb to violence. So you guys, we do not want that. We want kids to react in a big way to violence because it is a very awful, horrible, disturbing thing. We want them to react strongly to those images. We don't want kids to think, wow, this is everyday life, this is normal, and not sort of react to it like a person should. So a lot of psychologists believe that one of the major effects here to our constant exposure, it seems, to violence on TV and screen time is that it desensitizes us to those normal notions of reacting to violence in a very negative way, which they should, okay? So you gotta think about that. Overexposure to violence can sort of create these issues. All right, so exposure to stereotypes and unrealistic world is another reason we're concerned about this. A lot of uh, programming and screen time plays out these stereotypes and a world that's not based in reality. So once again, we think that kids, because they're not understanding the world, may sort of buy into that, which is a problem. 
Screen time is linked to less physical activity. Remember, kids need to be active and out playing and so forth. So if they're sitting on their devices all day, it has some uh, consequences of that, obviously. One of those would be being overweight and obese. So we know that kids that have access to screen time a lot, in other words, they're spending a lot of time in front of the screen, are more likely to be either overweight or obese, which comes with this whole set of problems as we, we've discussed. Another problem with screen time is that it's giving uh, violent models of aggression. In other words, it's often sort of communicating this message that violence is okay, that heroes need to be violent to solve problems, as we said before. So we don't want that message given to our children. We know that it affects their sleep habits, especially before bedtime. Keep in mind, guys, is that when you're looking at your cell phone right before your bedtime, the light stimulates your brain and alerts you. So certainly you want to make sure if your kids are watching TV or using devices to watch material, make sure there's a period of time before bedtime because we're finding that it actually disrupts their sleep. So you want to limit that. Distraction from homework, I mean, that probably goes without saying. Kids would rather be on the computer or rather be watching Hulu than doing their homework. So once again, we want them to be academically stimulated, not only just for you know, mental development, but to you know, sort of influence them to become successful individuals later on in life and getting those basic skills. So obviously uh, this can distract kids from doing things that are good for them, including homework less time interacting with peers. Now, obviously with Zoom and FaceTime, this can help, especially in the time we're at now, but <clears throat> kids need that real one-on-one -on -one time interacting with their peers, and they get that from being off devices sometimes, okay? So even though, yes, technology has made that more accessible, it's, it, in a way, it's still not the same thing is when you're interacting with someone in, in the same room with them. So think about that, guys. There's a lot more communication that could potentially happen when you're face-to-face -face with someone compared to seeing them on a screen. But overall, we're finding that if you're spending time watching shows and playing video games and so forth, it may be less social time and kids need social skills and practice at that. Studies have also linked more screen time to lower cognitive development. So that's obviously a huge one. We know that kids that show the most advanced in cognitive development limit their screen time. So that's just another effect uh, that we're seeing there. All right, so this will conclude our lecture here on screen time, media use, and development. I hope you guys have found that useful. So enjoy the class, guys, and we will see you online there.